simple question is, do you believe in equal pay? Well, I made the argument there, so it depends on so you don't believe in equal pay. <laughs> Hey, what's up, fam? It's the broke capitalist coming at you once again. And uh, yeah, I'm doing a series of reactions to reactions. And I just want to let everybody know, like, I am so happy to see people who look like me um, reacting to these videos of, you know, Thomas Sowell, we got uh, Jordan Peterson. And it's not that I'm happy that they agree with these people or agree with me. I'm just happy that people are starting to entertain other opinions uh, and viewpoints. That's the first step, in my opinion. Everybody's not going to agree on everything. And most, of, and a lot of times I found you may initially disagree, but with more information, you start to see, oh, okay, my original point wasn't, is not valid based on all these facts I have here, I was totally wrong, or I was wrong, or, hey, I'm right. But I love to see the diversity in thought. So I don't care if you look like me or not, honestly. Um, I judge people by their character. But we're visual beings, and it's easy to for us to make assumptions based on how people look. And based on how the three people on your video screen look, a lot of people who wouldn't know us would assume, would assume we vote Democratic for the Democratic Party. And maybe these two do. I don't. So here's a diversity of uh, values and viewpoints, maybe. Or maybe we're all thinking the same way. But anyway, uh, I want to give a shout out to them and their channel, uh, Half and Jay. You guys go out and subscribe to them. Follow them. They're pretty cool from what I've seen so far um and let's kick it off let's see what they have let's see their reaction to George, uh mr peterson's reaction i mean mr peterson that's that all good. it's all good <laughs> all right so let's see what this man talking about man the gender pay gap let me put a quote to you from the book where you say there are whole disciplines in universities forthrightly hostile towards men these are the areas of study dominated by the postmodern stroke neo-marxist claim that western culture in particular is an oppressive structure created by white men to dominate and exclude women but then i want to put minorities to dominate okay minorities. sure but i want to put to you that here in the uk for example let's say that's an example the gender pay gap stands at just over nine percent You've got women at the BBC recently saying that the broadcaster is illegally paying them less than men to do the same job. You've got only seven women running the top FTSE 100 companies. Yeah. So it seems to a lot of women that they're still being dominated and excluded, to quote your words back to you. It does seem that way, but multivariate analysis of the pay gap indicate that it doesn't exist. But that's so just not true, do. is it? That's I mean, that's nine percent pay gap. That's a gap between median hourly earnings yeah. between men and women. But there's that multiple, exists. yeah. But there's multiple reasons for that. One of them is gender, but it's not the only reason. Like, if you're a social scientist worth worth your salt, you never do a univariate analysis. Like, you say, well, women in the aggregate are paid less than men. Okay, well, then we break it down by age. We break it down by occupation we break it down by interest we break it down by personality but you're saying basically it doesn't matter if women aren't getting to the top because that's what's skewing that gender pay gap isn't it you're saying well that's just a fact of no, fact. Women it aren't necessarily matter. going to get to the top no i'm not saying it doesn't matter either you're saying, I'm saying there are multiple life. reasons for it yeah but those reasons why, why should women put up with those reasons why should, why should women, women be content i'm not saying not that they should the put up with it i'm saying that the claim that the wage gap between men and women is only due to sex is wrong. And it is wrong. There's no doubt about that. The multivariate analysis have been done. So well, I Let me interrupt. Um, and I've said this in other videos. You got two people here, Mr. Peterson, and you got this lady who uh, is very combative. And in my opinion, I just didn't, I mean, she's, she's not coming from an honest place. She's not coming from a place of let's, talk this out and figure out what Mr. Peterson's point of view is. And let me see if I can give him information to correct his point of view. That's just my opinion. Uh, but Mr. Peterson is coming from a, a worldview as Thomas so often uh, talks about as how the world is. And she's coming from a point of view of 
how the world ought to be. And that can be very dangerous because people who see the world and how it ought to be are often responsible for legislation that comes from a good place, but has detrimental effects. You, you keep on talking about multivariate analysis. I'm saying that 9% pay gap exists. Yeah. Yeah. That's a gap between men and women. I'm not saying why it exists, but it exists. Now, but if you you're a woman, that seems exists. pretty unfair. You have to say why it exists. But do you agree that it's unfair? If you're a woman... Not necessarily. I, I gotta pause right there. Yeah. Do you feel that it's unfair for, for women to get paid less and because of gender reasons or now are we talking about the same position or two different positions because if it's two different positions that's clearly going to be two different the same rate. position okay same position mm -hmm. uh i feel like the pay should be the same if, if you have the same exact position mm -hmm. as i have mm -hmm. and just because i'm a man i don't think i should be getting paid more than you okay if we have the same exact position now if you're a position lower than me you know what I'm saying? I'm higher, oh, yeah, and that's that's that's, that's, that's what balances itself out. You feel what I'm course, saying? But if, I'm in, but if you're in the same position as me, mm -hmm. then I wouldn't see why there would be a reason, unless they're basing it off of your credentials as far as what you have behind you, like as far as bachelor's degrees, master's degrees, so on and so on. You know, some people get paid more with more paperwork that they have right. attached to their name. What do you feel? I say now. I love the fact that he brought up credentials because most people who bring up this pay gap uh, argument totally leaves this out. Now, I'm pretty sure I've seen this video with this lady and Jordan Peterson before, and I'm pretty sure she never brought it up. As an executive search professional or a headhunter or whatever they call us these days, I, there's no way on planet Earth this will ever happen. Okay, here's Julie. She graduated from MIT with a bachelor's degree in computer science. And here is Andrea. She graduated from Chico, Uni Chico State, California with the same uh, you know, computer science degree. They go to anywhere. <laughs> you know, they go anywhere. Google to uh, the United States Post Office to you know, anywhere, right? The market will afford the MIT graduate with a higher base salary than Ju all things being equal, right? And the reason why is the MIT graduate is more marketable. It's far fewer people know than that graduate from MIT with a computer science degree than people on the level of a Chico state, right? So let's say they both start the same day doing the same work. Well, I don't care where you're at, there are gonna be more people trying to offer the girl from MIT a job than there will be from the, than the girl from Chico state. So if you wanna employ the girl from MIT, you're gonna to have to pay her more than you pay pretty much everybody else you offer that job to if you want an employer. So if you normally pay 50, 50 grand for a starting position, just easy numbers, 50 grand for a starting position for, some, for a person capable of doing that job, but here comes Julia or Julie walking into the HR department and they're like, well, we really love you, Julie. Uh, and we want you to start here, here's 50 grand. Julia go home, yeah, I'm happy. And then some headhunter like me call you like, hey, hey Julie. I can get you 60. Okay. So Julia says, thank you. No, thank you. I get a job offer for 60. That company said, well, we'll give you 61. Okay. She said, you know, the commute here is short. It's right around the corner from my house. I like what you guys are doing here. I'm going to stick with my original decision and start at 61. Then you get somebody from Chico State starting the same job. And they say, hey, we want to offer you 50. And he's like, well, I don't, I don't know. Goes home, think about it. Ain't no recruiter calling him. And so he comes back or she comes back and say, all right, I'll take the 50. Now, throughout their career, as they, you know, one year, two year, you get your raises. Well, she's starting at 61. 
So she's going to be at 65 before this dude gets, or this person gets to 65. They never put that in the equation. Now tell me a company that knowingly pays a woman less than a man in 2022. Right? They both got the same type of degree. They have the same experience. They do the same work. And they are currently being paid less because she's a woman. Lawsuit. So I often say this too. We live by the narrative and not by the truth. So you got to be careful of the narrative, right? And that's why I love these guys. They're investigating on their own. Performance-wise, because it, it, it all goes according to how you perform on the job. If you're a beast at this thing, I feel you, you of course, you get paid higher than anyone else. So you're saying that if we have the same position, if we have the same position, but, but I'm working harder than you, and your numbers is producing better than mine. Oh yeah, you saying you should be getting paid more than me? Of course. And you would, if all things being equal, you had the same background, same credentials, same type of schooling, all that. You both started at 50k, and Julie, you know, this person started at 50k is just producing 20 percent more. Guess what? When review time comes up. She's going to get paid more. If she doesn't, she's going to leave and go somewhere else where they will pay her more. And she will leave and get up to likely a 20% pay increase as opposed to the 2 or 3% pay increase if you stay in house. All right, I digress. Of course. That's how I feel. I, was, I, if I respect that. If you're drawing, you know, you're, you're, you're increasing, yeah. like you're making money for the company. Right. You're you're just the the goat at this thing, right? Like, I feel, of course, you're supposed to get paid more. I agree a thousand percent. Mm -hmm. I, it's a thousand percent. And, and, and it, gender has nothing to do nothing with it. Nothing to do with it because I come from a background in in, in the, in the force, job force that I was in to where what you just said is one hundred percent accurate. Mm -hmm. Because if you was not performing, mm -hmm. then you can have, for example, we had a male finance manager mm -hmm. and a female finance manager, mm -hmm. same position. Mm -hmm. But one was, like you said, was outperforming the other. Mm -hmm. So of course they will pay them more mm -hmm. because they're 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 valued more. Oh yeah, you see what I'm saying? So and like you say, it has nothing to do with the 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 male and the female part of it. Mm -hmm. So that's a good point that you made. Right on. Yes. <laughs> you have to say why it exists. But do you agree that it's unfair if you're a woman? Not necessarily. And on average, you're getting paid nine percent less than a man. That's not fair, is it? It depends on why it's happening. Right. I can give you an example. Okay, there's a personality trait known as agreeableness. Agreeable people are compassionate and polite. Mm -hmm. And agreeable people get paid less than, dis than less agreeable people for the same job. Mm -hmm. Women are more agreeable than men. Again, a vast generalization. Some women are not more agreeable than yes, men. Yes, that's true, but that's right. And some women get paid more than men. Right. So you were saying that by and large, women are too agreeable to get the pay rises. I just, no, I'm saying that that's one component. Of Why does she keep? Making it seem like this is what he's saying. Like, he's, she, like, like she, like she wants him to say. She's this. upset. No, she's, she's, she's upset. She's highly she's upset. upset. Mm -hmm. So that's why she's she's doing. That's why she's acting like that. Okay. She's, but it's like she's she's throwing the answer on him. Oh yeah, like, she's she's ticked. She's mad. So that's what women do. A lot of us. I'm not gonna say all of us, but a lot of us. Ninety percent. I'm about. not gonna say ninety percent. I'm just gonna say a lot of us. <laughs> Multivariate equation that predicts. Um, salary. It accounts for maybe five percent of the variance, something like that. So surely the other twenty, we need about another, 20, about another eighteen factors, one of which is gender. And there is prejudice. There's no doubt about that. But it accounts for a much smaller proportion of the variance in the pay gap than the radical feminists claim. Okay, so rather than denying the pay gap exists, which is what you did at the beginning of this conversation, shouldn't you say to women, rather than being agreeable? Uh, I don't think he did. Like, this is a facts-driven guy. There's obviously a pay gap there. He let that one slip by. Well, not asking for, for a pay rise. Go and ask for a pay rise. Right. Make yourself disagreeable with your boss. Oh, definitely. There's that. But I also didn't deny it existed. Yeah, yeah. I denied it existed because of gender. Okay. See, because I'm very, very, very careful. See how she put the words in his mouth? And he said, I never said that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it was of gender, but it was a, you know what I'm saying? Like, she's, she's angry. Right. Just because of gender. Okay. See, because I'm very, very, very careful with my words. 
So the pay gap exists, you accept that, but you're saying, I mean, the pay gap between men and women exists. You're saying it's not because of gender, it's because women are too agreeable to ask for pay rises. So it's make, one of the reasons. Okay, one of the reasons. So why not get them to ask for a pay rise? I've Wouldn't done that, that, done that many, many times in my career. And they just do so, Oh, they do it all the time. You can, it's, so one of the things that you do as a clinical psychologist is um, assertiveness training. So you might say, often you treat people for anxiety, you treat them for depression, um, and you, and, and maybe the next most common category after that would be assertiveness training. And so I've had many, many women, extraordinarily competent women in my clinical and consulting practice, and we put together strategies for their career development that involve continual pushing competing for higher wages and often tripled their wages within a five-year period. And you celebrate that? Of course. So of do, course. You actually, do you agree that you would be happy if that pay gap was eliminated completely? It because that's depend. all the radical feminists are saying. It would depend on how it was eradicated and how the, how, how the disappearance of it was measured. And you're saying if you it's at the cost can't. of men, that's a problem. Oh, there's all sorts of things that it could be at the cost of. It could even be at the cost of women's own interests. So I don't even think this lady knows what she's advocating for. Um, there, in a free market society, there will always be a pay gap. It doesn't have to be perpetual or permanent, but there's going to always be a pay gap. You know where there's not a pay gap? Two places. Slavery and communism. Because they might not be happy if they get equal pay. No, because it might interfere with other things that are causing the pay gap that women are choosing to like do. Like having well, children. Well, or choosing careers that actually happen to be paid less, which women do a lot of. But why shouldn't women have the right to choose not to have children or the right to choose those demanding careers? They do. They can. Yeah, that's fine. But you're saying that makes them unhappy, by and large. I'm saying that that, no, I'm not. This, man, this lady is like, I don't know if you've ever been to a party and you get trapped in the corner talking to somebody who's like drunk and philosophizing about life and you just can't escape because they, they talk in circles. But how did this lady get a job doing what she's doing today? Like, I, I'm being mean, but she's not listening. And that's, that's very frustrating. Very frustrating. I'm not saying that. I'm, I, and I actually haven't said that so far. You're saying it makes them miserable. No, I said that what was making them miserable was having part, was having weak partners. That makes them miserable. But um, I would say that many women around the age of, I would say between 28 and 32, have a career family crisis that they have to deal with. And I think that's partly because of the foreshortened time frame that women have to contend with. Like women have to get the major pieces of their life put together faster than men, which is also part of why men aren't under so much pressure to grow up. So because for the typical woman. Oh, um, he's speaking straight facts right now. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. We have to have things in order by a certain age. Whereas I can understand why men don't grow up as fast as women. Mm -hmm. Like we have to have, we have a timeline, mm -hmm. you know, well, having you kids. Having kids, especially having right. a family, right. taking care of home, like it's a set limit to right, us, right, you know? Right. Hey, let me jump in here right quick. Two things. My man's beard game is tight and my girl's do is ball. So big props. Um, I'm gonna piggyback on what she's just said. Just think about all right, I'm gonna talk to everybody who's over the age of 18, right? Because I ain't no telling how you were raised, you know, how parents were raising their kids 18 years ago. But if you were raised after, the, you know, 70s, 60s, 80s, um, you'll be able to relate to this. How many, show of hands, if you're a female, how many of you females were ever told, all right, now, you got to do good in school because one day you're going to have to take care of your husband and your kids. Now, make sure you study hard, get that good job, because one day you're going to have to take care of not only yourself, but your husband and your kids. Now, show of hands, whoever got that message, that's a female. Okay, I can't see you out there, but I'm envisioning that not too many of you are raising your hand. 
And in addition to that, what they're talking about, like, you know, females, there's this biological clock thing. And fellas, if you ever out there dating and you ran into a girl, you got that vibe that she's like 28, 29 years old and you weren't ready to settle down and she was kind of into you and you knew what it was. It, it was like an interview. Like, can I see your resume? Because I got to make this decision within a couple of weeks, right? The biological tick uh, clock has, it's very influential on women, more so than men, obviously. I hope that's obvious, right? So much so that when women or before you become a woman, you're a girl. And what are you doing as a girl? You're practicing having a family. They throw a, a you're a kid and they throw a baby in your lap. Hey, take care of this baby, baby. Uh, learn how to nurse, change the di diapers. All right, here's a little cooking set, right? What's your equip? What's your brother doing? He going out there destroying stuff, climbing on trees, building forts, keeping people out of the fort. What are you doing? Oh, here's Barbie and Ken. They're a nice family. They just moved into this house with this mortgage. Now Ken got to go off to work for 30 years and then have enough for us to retire. Oh, Ken's so great. Now what's, what's your brother doing outside? He's throwing rocks at other boys down the street or he's throwing a football or, bas or bouncing a basketball. Then you guys come together on wedding day and you're wondering why this guy ain't ready for a fam. Where you've been in pre, you've been in, you know, honors class family for all your life. And this dude just picking up a pamphlet called family. So now you get in the workforce. She spent all her life concerned with being a mom or a wife. He spent all his life concerned with being a breadwinner. Y'all apply for the same job. He did, you know, from the fifth grade, he's been worried about taking care of family. So maybe his grades are better. He sacrificed more. He gets into a better college. Then she does. They apply for the same job. They both get in. He's more marketable. He gets a bigger base salary. And now throughout his career, he gets paid more than her. Where, or the other option, which is, you know, if you were born in the 60s, 70s, 80s, whatever, if you were a fine ass woman, what the hell are you busting your ass for? Somebody going to marry. Now, there's very few exceptions to that rule. Very few. Right. If you were fine, you knew you were fine. There's very few women like, you know what? I don't care. I'm busting out this calculus. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be a PhD in uh, thermodynamics. They exist. Right. They exist. But the incentive to do that isn't there. Right. For very fine. Like you just, you highly very fine. I'm, I'm just fine, fine. Right. Uh, you know, take everything with a grain of salt, blah, blah, blah. You guys, if you do it, <laughs> it's just the truth. Right, no, that's facts. That's facts. The white men aren't under so much pressure to grow up. So because for the typical woman, um, she has to have her career and family in order pretty much by the time she's 35. Because otherwise the options start to run out. And so that puts a tremendous amount of stress on women, especially at the end of their 20s. Okay. Because he's saying basically, once y'all get like the age of 35, like it's hard to have kids. Right. It's hard to have a family. Exactly. Because it's more of more of a consequence to have it. Like because the older you get, it's the chances, the lower the chances right. of having, having a child. Of it. Like you being an older woman. Right. Having you know to be saying? put on bed rest, right. being pregnant. Exactly. Yeah. It's, right. Maybe it's, high blood pressure or something. Or, you know what I mean? Or just whatever health complications. Right. 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 Now. And so that puts a tremendous amount of stress on women, especially at the end of their 20s. I'm going to take issue with the idea of the typical woman, because, you know, all women are different. And that's why I want to just put another quote to you from the book. Plus, they're say, different in some ways and the same in others. Okay, you say women become more vulnerable when they have children. Oh, yes. And you talk to one of your YouTube interviews about crazy harpy sisters. So, a simple question. Is gender equality a myth in your view? Is that something that's just never going to happen? It depends on what you mean by equality. No, do you, do you mean fairly, men and women? Getting the same opportunities? Fairly. People, we could get to a point where people were treated fairly or more fairly. I mean, people are treated pretty fairly 
in Western culture already. But we can. But they're really not, though, are they? I mean, otherwise, why would there only be seven women running FTSE 100 <laughs> companies in the UK? Why? Why would there still be a pay gap, which we've discussed? Oh, well, that's that's why are women at the BBC saying that they're getting paid illegally less than men to do the same job? Well, that's not fair, is it? Sort of the first question. There are others are complicated questions. Okay, I gotta pause it again. I'm sorry. I know. God, this, oh. this, this is the whole, the whole okay. point. And I know I'm about to get who stumped on like crazy, but this is just these. This is my no. This is my belief, yeah. and this is through my eyes. Right. But how I feel. Right with JC. Okay, the WNBA and the NBA. Mm -hmm. To me, I think it's visually appealing to watch the men play. Men are stronger. The stamina is there. You know, it's. It's just, you know, it's, it's, it's a whole different vibe to me mm -hmm. versus the WNBA. Like, I, nine times out of ten, I would prefer to get a, dub, I mean, a, a, an NBA ticket and go watch the game because to me, it's, it's cool to watch the WNBA, mm -hmm. but I'm not a big fan of the WNBA like I am the NBA. And that's just the truth. Yeah, and like you just said, it's, it's just more appealing for you it's more visually by watching the men play because they're more exciting, more athletic. You know what I'm Yeah, that's, that's, ladies, I'm not, I'm not saying we don't deserve the pay because I'm a woman at the end of the day. But it goes back to what you said earlier in this conversation. If you're producing more for that company, the the performance then is all the performance. Anyway. So now, if you're looking at the WNBA and NBA, obviously it's the NBA is getting more revenue, right? Again, they're talking about right. She's saying, "Look, it is what it is. I like to see the men are more athletic. Uh, it's more entertaining, and you get a bigger crowd, and get which pays more money. Uh, and then, but the WNBA is talking about how it ought to be. You know, we should get paid just as much." Because we're doing the same thing. Okay. It's the yeah, so if you're bringing in more revenue, of course, their pay will be higher. Right? But now, if the WNBA was, whatever reason, was bringing in a whole lot more revenue than the NBA was, as far as views and, 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 and all that type of shit, then I, I would feel that they'll be paying in the WNBA just as well as they're paying, how they're paying the NBA. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it, Maybe I don't I'm, I don't know how the percentage is pay wise with the WNBA oh, versus it's a huge, NBA. Yeah. Is it? Oh, huge, dumb, yeah. Like at the yeah. end of the day, it's all in performance for me. Yeah, and, and, and it's about the revenue you bring in that you bring to that company, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, nothing to do with gender in my personal opinion, in your opinion. You know but I'm saying it's more visually appealing to me though to watch men play basketball versus women. To me, right? It's just facts. Men to do the same job. Well, that's not fair, is it? Sort of the first question. There are other complicated questions. Seven, seven women. Re repeat that one. There's seven women seven. running the top FTSE 100 companies in the UK. Okay. Well, the I first, mean, the first question fair. might be, um, why would you want to do that? Why would a man yeah. want to do it? Well, there's there's a lot of money. It's an interesting there's job. There's a certain number of, of men, although not that many, who are perfectly willing to sacrifice virtually all of their life to the pursuit of a high-end career. So they'll work. These are men that are very intelligent. They're usually very, very conscientious. They're very driven. They're very high energy. They're very healthy. And they're willing to work 70 or 80 hours a week, nonstop, specialized, at one thing to get to the top. So you're saying women are just more sensible. They don't want that because it's not a nice life. I'm saying that's part of it, definitely. And so I work So you, you don't think there are barriers in their way that prevent them getting to the top? Oh, there are some barriers, yeah, like other, like men, for example. I mean, to get to the top of any organization is incredibly competitive. Man, the patience this dude has. Enterprise. And the men that you're competing with are simply not going to roll over and say, please take the position. So this is absolute all-out warfare. Is gender equality a myth? I, I don't know what you mean by the question. Men and women aren't the same, and they won't be the same. That doesn't mean they can't be treated fairly. Is gender equality desirable? If it means equality of outcome, then almost certainly it's undesirable. That's already been demonstrated in Scandinavia. Because in Scandinavia... What do you mean by that? Equality of outcome is undesirable. Well, men and women won't sort themselves into the same categories if you leave them alone to do it off their own court. I've already seen that in Scandinavia. It's 20 to 1 female nurses 
to male, something like that. It might not be quite that extreme. And approximately the same male engineers to female engineers. And that's a consequence of the free choice of men and women in the societies that have gone farther than any other societies to make gender equality the purpose of the law. Those are ineradicable differences. You can eradicate them with tremendous social pressure and tyranny. But if you leave men and women to make their own choices, you will not get equal outcomes. Right. So you're saying that anyone who believes in equality, whether you call them feminist, call them whatever you want to call them, should basically give up because it ain't going to happen. Man, where did they get this lady from? Only if there ain't any quality of outcome. Mm. So you're saying give people equality of, of opportunity, that's fine. Not only fine, it's eminently desirable for everyone, for individuals and for society. But still women aren't going to make it, that's what you're really saying. It depends on your measurement techniques. They're doing just fine in medicine. In fact, there are far more female physicians than there are male physicians. He's making a point, though, because it is based on your decision of what you want to do in your career. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, what I'm getting is, is, is based like, like he's saying like women will, 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 will more than likely go toward like, you know, being a nurse, uh, a RN or an LBN or, you know what I'm saying? In, in, in those type of fields versus men, they're trying to go to like, he said, an engineer or a, a welder or, a, you know what I'm saying? Like, 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 like you don't see, I haven't seen mm -hmm. no woman garbage man. You see what I'm saying? Rolling around, picking up the, uh, the garbage and stuff like that. I, I have. That's what I'm saying. I, I, I haven't seen it. But, and I feel that it should be equal pay. Is, you know what I'm saying? Like, as far as that goes. That's what, what I'm saying. saying. What yeah, there's absolutely no reason. If you don't, if you got a high school diploma, if, if the barrier to entry into being a garbage worker, the garbage professional, whatever, people pick up the garbage for us. Um, if the barrier to entry is uh, just a certain level of education, like high school diploma, right? There's no reason on earth other than marketability why a woman should be getting paid less than a man. And I, please tell me where that's happened. Like, like with all the factors we talked about, where is this happening? So the truth is one thing, the narrative is another. The left has control of this narrative and it's hurting everybody. Right. A normal job like that, and you guys have the same position, and even, it should be equal pay. And, and, but if you're in a corporation, like you said. Like a surgeon, I feel, of course it should be equal pay. You know That's what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? All I'm saying is, if, it's, if you're in a corporation to where, you know, you're like a GM or something to where, you know, you have to bring in revenue. Mm -hmm. For the company to survive, it depends on the performance. That's and what the depends position. on the performance. The exactly. position and the performance. Exactly right. But if you have a normal job, I'm working a freaking warehouse. Warehouse job. Yeah, we are a warehouse job, and I'm a supervisor. You're a supervisor. We got the same task, mm -hmm. and you're basically doing the same. The same thing. exact thing. Oh, you should yeah. get the same thing. Okay. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's, to right. me, that's no brainer. Yeah, that's, that's a no brainer. That's no brainer. So. But yeah. some companies are not with that. Right. But I have women deserve less, and that's not fair. It's not good. Again. Narrative versus the truth. Now, I'm sure somewhere there's some company right now, if they went in and looked at their books, they'll see that, oh, my God. Andrea started here at the same time Michael started here, and Michael is getting paid more than Andrea for some reason, right? I know the reason. It's because Andrea is a woman, and we're going to keep it that way. Please tell me where this is at in 2022. Why, why would they deserve this if they're doing the same exact thing? You know what I'm saying? Like, that, that, don't, that don't make no sense to me. That's, that's weird. I did medicine. In fact, there are far more female physicians than there are male physicians. There are, there are lots, of, uh, lots of disciplines that are absolutely dominated by women. Many, many disciplines. And they're doing great. Nice. So let me put something else to you from the book. You say the introduction of the equal pay for equal work argument immediately complicates even salary comparison beyond practicality mm -hmm. for one simple reason. Who decides what work is equal? It's not possible. So the simple question is, do you believe in equal pay? Well, I made the argument there. So it depends on so you don't believe in equal pay. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that at all. All right, I can't take this lady. Um, 
Hey, you guys, go check out Half and Jay, and I'm going to end it on a little rant here. So we're talking about equal pay for equal work, and I don't believe there's too many people on planet Earth, or at least in the United States, who don't believe in that. Uh, I do believe that most people have succumbed to the narrative that's pushed out by the left, uh, the progressive left, um, in order to gain more votes. Basically, hey, we want to protect you from the evil misogynist men. Vote for us, and we're going to get you equal pay. No one's asking the question, why is this a debate in the first place? Now, I'm going to go way off the rails here and talk about the Federal Reserve. And I'm going to give you a little story about a man named Brady who was raising three boys of his own. And then he ran into this chick and she had three girls of her own. And they ended up getting married and they had this chick, this lady named Alice lived with them in Southern California in a fairly new house. And I believe they had two cars and Mike was just a regular architect. He didn't own a firm or nothing. Now, Mike's salary could afford him to take care of not only himself, which he trained to do as a little boy with his boys. It's like, just kidding. Mike didn't train to raise a family as a boy. Mike was out there throwing stones, rocks, uh, you know, being mischievous. That's what he was doing. Now, his wife, she was practicing being up, you know, being a homemaker and stuff like that. So when Mike finally got his act together as a teenager and his parents were like, boy, quit acting stupid. You're going to have to take care of your wife and some kids one day. And he said, oh, okay, I better get together, get my stuff together and start taking these math classes. I think I want to be an architect. Boom, I'm heading in the right direction. His salary back then, when he got married, what was her name, Jan? Or what was that one of the kids' names? Anyway, when he got married, was able to take care of not only himself, her, his three kids, her three kids, and them living in May on one salary. Who can do that today? Raise your hand. Who can do that today? And the reason you can't do that today is not because of a gap in pay. It's because of the dwindling purchasing power of your dollar. Right? I'm going to leave you with that thought. And if you're interested in that, check, in, check out some of my videos. I talk about that. Or you can read one of the, that book up here, the creature, of, the creature from Jekyll Island. Uh, that's probably one of, that's the biggest influence, negative influence on, on every aspect of American culture. It's like the dwindling purchasing power of the dollar, right? I wonder, like, if you're a woman, you can hit me up in the chat, I mean, in the chat, like, if you're a woman, all things would be any, would you prefer to stay at home? I'm not advocating for this. I'm just wondering, would you prefer to be able to afford your current standard of living, stay at home and raise your kids? Or would you prefer to have someone else babysit your kids while you go work for some shareholder somewhere producing a product that you don't believe in? I mean, I know I kind of waited that question, but it's a legitimate question. So why, Why doesn't that conversation ever come up? Well, I'm, a br I'm bringing it up, so stay tuned. All right, y'all. Hope you got something out of this. Go and check out Half and Jay. Uh, you can check out my channel too. Subscribe as well. Check out some of the other videos. Peace.